the Fulani, said to be the world's largest nomadic group of about 20 million, are dispersed across West and Central Africa. It's a predominantly Muslim population of cattle herders. In Nigeria, the majority are found in the northern and central regions. The president, Mohamedou Buhari, is from a Fulani background. As the frontier of the Sahara Desert has moved south, Fulani herds have gradually been pushed south towards Nigeria's middle belt, which straddles the pre-colonial line dividing Nigeria's predominantly Muslim north from its Christian south. The middle belt is a farming region, and the advancing Fulani-owned herds have increasingly encroached on croplands. Many of the farmers are ethnic Barom, an indigenous people who are predominantly Christian. The long history of disputes between the nomadic herders and the farming communities is often referred to as farmer-herder clashes. However, attacks by herder militia now occur with such frequency and apparent organization that the characterization as communal clashes seems no longer an adequate description. The narrative which goes around that Fulani and farmers are fighting because of farmlands, that is not correct. Their target is the land. This is what they want, is the land. They want to take over the land. They want control over the land. And what they are doing is displacing the indigents, those whose ancestors live in the land. The Fulani are killing them and occupying their lands. Every attack of the Fulani herdsmen leaves the villagers in rubble, armed with sophisticated weaponry, including AK-47s and, on at least one occasion, rocket launchers. The herder militia is believed to have killed more men, women and children in 2015, 2016 and 2017 than Boko Haram in what local observers increasingly describe as a campaign of ethno-religious cleansing. By 2 o'clock p.m., they came in mass, over 300 people. Yes, over 300 people that came here again in the village. Most all of them, every one of them is carrying AK-47. AK some are carrying two, some are one. So everybody has to run away with his life. Who gave them the sophisticated weapons? Anytime, if it is a strike is to take place, there will be a symbol of a helicopter coming down and land in the bush. So the next thing will be an attack somewhere else. In recent decades, some Fulani herdsmen have grown increasingly radical due to the influx of extremist Islamic preaching by missionaries from Saudi Arabia and Iran, especially in the shadow of Boko Haram's campaign since 2009 to impose Islamic law across Nigeria, Fulani conflicts with farming villagers seem to have become more than simply land disputes that boil over into violence. They attack mostly Christian, Christian dominated areas. That is why you see they burn our churches. But there is no only mosque that burn down. But all the churches burn down. Any Muslim house, they will never temper with. But any house that belongs to Christian. These are the houses that they normally destroy. In June 2018, at least 200 people were murdered in Plateau State. In February 2016, at least 500 people were killed by Fulani militia in the mainly Christian area of Agatu in the central Benue State. In Benue State only, over 100,000 children have been forced out of school and over 500 churches attacked since 2011. In March 2010 attacks, again, more than 500 people were massacred by herdsmen in Dog and Nahawa, the worst such incident in Nigeria's recent history. Fulani herdsmen, it's Boko Haram in disguise. The same Fulani people that have been living peacefully with the farmers suddenly have changed from using sticks to tend their cows, to rear their cows, all of a sudden going to the farmlands killing farmers, surrounding whole villages, wiping out Christian farmers, killing their wives, killing their children, burning their homes, displacing them. Very clearly an agenda is emerging. Locals and human rights groups accuse the government of Nigeria and President Buhari of failure to deal with the conflict. 
An international crisis group report has pointed out the persistence of impunity as one of the root causes of the continuing violence. Some Middle Belt states have introduced an anti-grazing law in an attempt to manage the conflict. The law requires everyone to keep their livestock within ranches. Those breaking the law face the possibility of a five-year jail sentence. However, the indigenous farmers say allocating land to be classified as grazing fields means that vast swathes of their ancestral lands will be taken away from them and made into grazing fields for Hausa Fulani herdsmen.